In this lesson, I want to focus on using the for repetition structure in which we will have a loop execute a certain number of times from a beginning value to an ending value of a variable. And the best way I think to demonstrate that is to sum up the numbers in a range. And so I created an app here. My, so I created an application here. The name of the application is 4demo1. And I created two labels. One says range start, one says range end. And then to the right of those, I have a text box named txt start. And I set the back color to a light yellow. And I set the text to one to start with as a default value. And then the second text box here is txt end, also set to a light yellow. And the text is set to four. I have a button named btn sum. The text of that button says sum the numbers in the range. Another label, I didn't bother to name it because it's just a label, sum, range sum is the text. And then another label named LBL sum because we're going to put output into this label. So I want to name it. And I made the font a little bit larger and bolder. And I set in, in all three of these, the two text boxes and my label, I aligned these to the right. And then I have one more label here called LBL numbers. And this is going to show all the numbers in the range. So that's my interface. I suggest you pause the video at this point and go ahead and recreate all that. OK, so we're ready to code. I'm going to grab my properties and dock them back over here. Let me explain to you what this program is going to do. So I have a range start of 1, range end of 4. And I want to take the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 with my start and my end and list those numbers in this label, my LBL numbers label, and give me the sum of one to four in this label. And so one plus two plus three plus four should show a 10 here. So that's what our program's gonna do. Let's code our button. I'm gonna double click on it. And I get the stub for btn sum underscore click. It's gonna handle the click event. And we're gonna create a couple variables here. They're gonna be integers. So I'm going to do num start, and we're going to take the text from txt start and convert it to an integer. So I'm going to do int dot parse to cast that string, the string being txt start dot text value. So whatever number we put in there, we're going to give it, convert that to an integer and assign it to num start. I'm going to do the same thing for a variable called num end. And as you may have guessed, it's going to be int.parse txt end.txt. So those are the two values I want to work with. I want another variable called sum. Remember, we want to find the sum of the numbers in that range. And we'll set it equal to 0. Now I have that LBL numbers and LBL sum, which is going to provide our answer because I want, want to run this multiple times. Let's clear those out. So LBL numbers dot text equals quote, quote, that'll clear anything in that label. And then LBL sum dot text equals quote, quote. All right. So now we're ready to, to use a for loop to go through all the numbers in the range from the num start to the num end. So I'll type in four, and then in parentheses, we're gonna put three statements. The first one initializes a counter variable. And I'm gonna use an integer called i, and i is pretty common to use for a counter. You can also use j, k, but you can use any integer. I could have named this fred if I wanted, int fred. But int i is gonna start off equaling num start, whatever that number was in the starting text box. And then I'm going to put a semicolon to separate it from the second part of these parentheses. There's actually three little statements here inside the parentheses for the for loop. Next, in the second area, we want to have a Boolean expression that as long as that is true, the loop will continue. And we're going to use our counter of i. And as long as i is less than or equal to num end, we're going to continue on with our loop. Now, we also need some way of modifying the value of i throughout the loop so we don't get into an endless loop that just never quits and our computer hangs. And that is to use an incremental value like i++. Every time through the loop, i would increment by 1. If you wanted to decrement, you could do i minus minus. If you wanted to increment 
um, i by 2. You could say i plus equals 2. In this case, we're going to combine by 1, so i plus plus. And I'm going to do my curly brackets. Those are going to go down the next couple lines. And now every time through the loop, I can tell it what I want it to do. Well, one thing I want it to do is to list the current number, the value of i, in our LBL numbers label. So LBL numbers dot text. And I'm going to concatenate to where value is there. We're starting with no value, but I want to do i dot two string, converting the, letter, the value of i to two string. And because I want the next one to go on, on a new line, we're going to add a new line character of backslash n. Need my semicolon. And then I also want to increment sum by the value of i. That will sum all the numbers in this range. Okay, so those two statements are going to continue as long as i is less than or equal to num n. It's going to start at num start, increment each time through. So when we had that 1 and the 4, the first time through the loop, i will be 1. The next time, i will be 2. The next time, i is 3. The next time, i is 4. The next time, i is 5. But now that is beyond this condition. This is now false. If i is 5 and num end is 4, 5 is not less than or equal to 4. And so we will then continue with the statement after this curly bracket. And what we want to do after the curly bracket is display the value of sum in our LBL sum label. So we're going to set the text equal to sum dot two string. And that is our code. I hope you're following along with me. So if you need to pause this video and enter this code into your program. All right, let's test and see if this worked. I'm going to click the start button up here at the top. So here then is our program. We're going from range 1 to 4. And remember, we should get a sum of 10. And it should list the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And that's exactly what it did. If I set this to 10, I can tell you the range from 1 to 10, the sum should be 55. And we should get 1 through 10 here. And that's exactly what we get. If I set this to 1,000, we should get 500,500 and the numbers 1 through 1,000 listed here. And it appears that's what we get. This, since this is a label, I can't scroll down in the label. I can't click and move my cursor down so there's actually 1,000 numbers there. We'll assume there is. Um, in a few lessons, we're going to look at list boxes, and I can replace this with a list box that has a scroll value or a scroll property, and we can actually scroll through the, all the values in that list box. That would have been a better choice here than a label, but we haven't talked about list boxes yet, so we're kind of stuck with a label. Let's do one more. If we do, uh, obviously, 1 to 3, we should get the value of 6, 1 plus 2 plus 3, and we get 1 through 3. Now, if I do a minus 10 to a positive 10, list those numbers including 0 and our range sum or the sum of our range is 0 because the minus 1 through 10 equals out the positive 1 through 10 and we're left with 0. So everything seems to be working and that is how we can use a for loop. So once again in our for loop we have three parts inside the parentheses here. The first one is the initialization of our counter then a Boolean expression that checks to see if we've reached the end of our for loop. And then a way to change our counter. And the plus plus will increment the counter by 1. Well, let's do another example. I'm going to allow the user to enter a string, and I'm going to show them that string reversed. So I'm going to go to the File menu and choose New Project. We want a Windows Form App .NET Framework. I'm going to say Next. I'm going to call this one um, for demo reverse string. And I'll bring my properties over. I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. I don't need this to be quite so big. And for my form, let's just set this to uh, for demo to reverse string. And let's do a label. The text label will be enter string. And then I have a text box. I'm 
and I'll just call this uh, txt input. Next, I want a button. We'll call the button btn reverse. And the text will be reverse the string. And then I need some way of doing an output. So I'm going to do another label. Let's set this label to LBL output as far as the name. I'm going to set the auto size to false. Not that it really matters in this case. I'm going to get rid of the text so there's nothing there. And that's going to be our interface. So btn. I'm sorry, txt output, btn reverse. I see that I misspelled that. And then a label called lbl output. If you need to, pause the video at this point and create that interface. And then we're going to come back and we'll code our button. Okay, I'm going to grab the properties and drag them out of the way. Dock them back over on the right. And I'm going to double click the reverse string button. I'm going to create a string variable called original, and this simply is going to equal txt input.txt. I could work directly with that text box text. I just think it's a little cleaner to put that into a variable. And then on another string, this is going to be called reversed, and this can equal nothing quote quote. I'm going to do a for loop. And again, I'll use an integer of i equals zero. And I want to continue as long as i is less than original dot length. So I'm going to get the length of my original string. Now I need a capital L there. And then I'm going to increment i each time through the loop by 1, so i++. plus plus. Curly brackets to bookend the contents of our loop. And the loop is simply going to be reversed equals original. I'm going to take original and get the substring. And the character I want to start with is i. And my length each time through the loop is going to be one character at a time. So it's i comma 1. And we're going to add that to reversed. So we're going to put each subsequent letter in front of our string. And that will reverse the string. And that is my loop. Very simple. And I want to display that. So LBL output dot text equals reversed. And that is the extent of my code to reverse the input string and display it. Pause the video if you need to to, to enter that code into your program and then we're going to test. So let's go to the start menu. So I'm going to enter a string of my dog has fleas, reverse the string, starts with the period, and then we get fleas backwards, has backwards, dog bas backwards, and my backwards. That seems to work. Let's just try a simple one, smcc. And we get CCMS. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And we get that string reversed. So here we used a for loop to work through 
manipulating each character of a string.